Merry Christmas! Welcome to our Team Clueless Christmas Battle Report. Ho, ho, ho! It is myself and Nick today. Unfortunately, Sai has had to work, so tradition has been broken. Sai is not here for our Christmas Battle Report, but we're having one anyway. Also, tradition has also been broken because if I go round to my oven and look inside, there's no gammon in the oven, which is a bit of a pity Damn because on yeah, because <laughs> we're not eating the gammon until kind of like middle of next week, and it's the Friday before Christmas today, and we decided it was a bit early to cook the gammon, and we couldn't play Monday, so we're doing our Christmas battle report today. It is called Christmas Carnival today. It's got all kinds of Christmassy stuff thrown in it. So but firstly, no giant, no giant monster. We've got a monster, obviously, it's us, but we've got no giant monster. So first of all, the table. As you can see, we've got the tablecloth, sorry, snow mat out again today <laughs> to give it a Christmassy feel. We've gone for a bit of an industrial wasteland. So at this end, we've got a bit of a, a ruined hive uh, building structure. We've got this really nice tall one here. Uh, the statue of the heroic space marine in the centre there. Then there's an industrial plant plonked down right next to people's homes, exactly as the Emperor intended. Uh, I've got a crash lander over here, another ruined building, some supply crates are just scattered around, and then there's a little bit of foliage down this end, and then... Yeah. It's, why would you have the, an industrial bit at the edge of a town when trees yeah. then start appearing? Who would do that? <laughs> uh, but then, as if by a Christmas miracle, a Christmas tree has sprouted up at the end. And watch what it does. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Look at the glowy power. Now, the table cross, cloth appears to have shrunk in the wash. So the ends of the table are usable. The snow has just obviously melted. There must be a power line running underneath that part and this other part of the table down here, which has melted the snow from those areas. Uh, and you can see our lovely Christmas tree is a pound one from Poundland, but it's the thought that counts. So let's go on to the mission today. So the mission involves many things, as it often does at this time of year. So we have, first of all, got our armies. We're playing 2,500 points today, so massive armies. But they're going to deploy in a slightly different way, which should even out the pace of the game a little. So we're each going to deploy 1,000 points, or roughly anywhere between kind of like 50 and 100 points of 1,000 points uh, on the table. And then on each turn, second, third and fourth, we will deploy another 500 points of our army. So our armies will drip feed onto the table to keep the battle going. This game ends after seven turns, because there are quite a few ways of gaining victory points over the course of the game. Uh, so we've already divided our forces up, but we haven't had to choose which bit comes in when. Uh, so we're going to have to deploy our 1,000, but then we can choose which 500 points of the bits we've segregated off to bring on when we need them. Uh, so that gives us a bit of tactical flexibility there. On turn three, the unit you bring on, or the units, one of them can come on from one of the two flanks of the table, either side as well as behind you. All the rest of your units have to come on behind or via any other deployment methods they may have. And then on the fourth turn, the units to come on then, one of them of your choice can come on from any table edge. Uh, the usual rules of deploying somewhere outside of nine inches uh, are uh, in effect again. But other than that, you can just move on from the table edge. Uh, so those are those rules. Um, then we have the random Christmassy stuff that happens. So we have a table to roll on. I know you'll all be shocked if you've watched our videos before. I was shocked when you tell me a table. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's two tables, actually. Uh, so the first table you roll on is a 2d6 table. It has a few different effects. I won't go into all of them. Um, each of the results on the table also either turns on or turns off the Christmas tree. So you don't know when the Christmas tree will be on. Can you flick it on again, Nick? At the start of your turn, if you control the Christmas tree and the light is on, after the roll this is, you gain a victory point. So control of the Christmas tree is key. But if the light turns off, ah oh damn, you may have controlled it, but you're not gaining a victory point if it is off. Uh, so that is the power of Christmas visiting you there. Other things that may happen if I wander through my house, apologies for the mess, it's been a busy week. We have on the Christmas tree down here... A giant polar bear. There is a small chance that he will come into play via the um, the table we roll on, and he will rampage around like our hunted monsters usually do. And he is worth victory points. If he's killed, he is then becomes an objective on the table, which is worth victory points. One to start with, but if you roll the polar bear result more times on the table, his victory points go up for controlling his corpse at the end of the game. Um, 
And, question. Yep. How will Emma feel when Gasgill rips the head off the cli- uh, trophy rack? Emma, my wife, uh, I'm not going to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a headless polar bear on your That's Christmas it. Tree. And then up here we also have a Christmas angel, a Christmas spirit, as it were. There is a chance that that will arrive on our table and it can hurt people nearby with its holy power. But if we manage to slay it, it's worth victory points to us. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do with that. OK, and there are the results. The other things that can arrive on the table, which I've left upstairs, but I'll go and get them, are small golden baubles, which can be uncovered in the snow. Uh, they will arrive on the table, and if you control one at the end of your turn, then you can open up the bauble and see what it actually contains. A victory point! There are good chances else. it will contain victory points. It might contain a command point, if you've been good. It might have the blessings of Christmas, <laughs> uh, which will heal your unit, or it may have a lump of coal, in which case you get nothing inside the bauble. But we'll find out when we play. Them's are the rules. I don't think I've forgotten any. That was quite a few to go through. Um, there are obviously detailed rules about or how all these things interact, but I won't tell you about that here, because you want to hear about our armies, don't you? Yeah! See, I knew they would. So, this is what 2,500 points of Death Guard with a few Alpha Legion allies looks like. I will apologise up front by the state of paintedness of my models. Everything has paint on, but a lot of them are kind of like work in progresses. Some are fully painted, as you'll come to see. Uh, so, this is after the chapter approved points changes, uh, which hasn't affected a huge amount of the Death Guard army. It's reduced some of their weapon options and a couple of their models by a little bit. Uh, so, let's start with the main man who I'm going to start painting this Christmas. I got him last Christmas. Uh, he is at the back there, Mortarion, leader of the Death Guard. He is obviously my warlord. Then we have. In a battalion detachment of Death Guard, I have Typhus there. Uh, we also have a Demon Prince of Nurgle. He is wearing the separating plate, which gives him a two-up armor save and the ability to bounce wounds in close combat. Then as troop choices, we have quite a few actually. We have a 10-man Plague Marine squad. You can see all my Plague Marines are the old style Marines. Uh, this squad has a Power Fist on the Sergeant. Two Flamers. Or in fact, I'm using the Bile Spurts, which are basically the Poison Flamers, or the... Corruption Flamers, whatever it's called. Uh, and then I have two guys with Plague Flails as well who are really good at laying the hurt down. Then I have two separate squads of Plague Marines down here. Each of them is armed with two plasma guns and a combi plasma. And they've got a bail sword on the uh, sergeant, just a basic uh, bail sword. Then I have two squads of 20 um, Pox Walkers. The good old zombies come to town. They're probably the best painted bit of my army, weirdly. And then we have back here a rhino for some of the Plague Marines to rock around in. We have the little thing on the floor, which I can't remember exactly what it's called. Uh, then we plague have crawler. a bloat drone. No, the Plague Crawler's the bigger one. This is the little, the little. I'll think of its name at some point. Blight Mythic <laughs> Blight Hauler, that's the one. It's got a missile launcher and a multi-melter. And then I have a double Plague Spitter, um, which are the flamers that also have plague on them, on my little flying drone there. And lastly, rounding out the plague part of the list, are three of the Death Guard Bodyguard Terminators down here. They're the Forge World models because most of my Death Guard are the smaller, older models, and especially my Typhus. And if I got the newer versions of these, they would tower over the rest of my army, so I got the Forge World ones instead. And they're also really cool. Then we have an Alpha Legion patrol detachment coming along to help out. We have a Corn Lord on bike. He's got an axe, which I spent a command point to give him the Relic Axe, which is much more deadly. Uh, we have a troop choice of five Alpha Legion uh, troops there. They have an auto cannon. Uh, then we have some Alpha Legion Berserkers at the back there. There are 13 of them. Uh, the Sarge has a giant sword at the front there, you can see, which we use the rules for a power fist. They've got three plasma pistols, a spattering of chain axes and a banner in there to let them re-roll charge. And lastly, we have a Hellbrute with twin link Laz Cannon, which have come down 10 points in the new rules, as has his power fist, meaning he's only 130 points for that, which is a pretty good bargain. And that is... Two and a half thousand points of Chaos Space Marines, and it's actually pretty Space Marine heavy. Now you see the piddly Space Marine army. Here's the ginormous Orc army. I'm having to stand quite far back to fit it all in. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, as we go closer, we, of course, are Les by the great and wonderful Gasgul. <laughs> One day Nick will not use it, but I'm not sure when that day will be. Maybe if we play for, uh, 200 point army? I can't yeah. afford it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we're led by Gasgul. Um, we've got a pain boy as well. 
This is a unit of um, goths, obviously, with Gaskell being in, of a vanguard unit. So we've got Pain Boys, an elite troop, one unit of Mega Nobs, a uh, second unit of Mega Nobs, a unit of 10 Storm Boys, and the Bone Breaker um, Battle Wagon, with, which has got the Death Roller and a cannon. That is my goth side of the army. The rest of it is Death Skulls, so that comes as um, they get the 6-up Invulnerable save on Orcs. They get six of them, I will say. They also get... Um, re-roll a hit, or to re-roll wound, a hit, a to wound, and, and a damage. Yeah. They're yeah. awesome. Uh, and they're all objective secured. Yeah. <laughs> um, for them, we have got a big mech with a shock attack gun. Nice. Haven't seen him for a while. We've got a war trike. Uh, we have got ten looters. Uh, five war bikers. There's a power, power claw knob in there. There's power claws in everything in this. Um... We have got the Booster Blaster, which hasn't quite finished being painted yet. Just okay, the gun on the top. You can use it without the blaster, maybe. Mm, maybe. And we've got the Drag Star fully painted, so we can't have the excuse of, I've blown it off the, uh, the unpainted model off the table this time. Well, this is true. I've got more <laughs> unpainted models than you, I suspect. We've got three Defcopters to try them out as well. Nice. Uh, all with the rockets. Uh, that's everything on there. We've got a truck. Uh, we've got a normal um, battle wagon with an hard case and a cannon. We've got the Death Dread with four Dread Claws. We're trying out a Daka Jet. It's been a while since I've seen a Daka Jet or a Flyer at all. And then, obviously, the 52 Warp Boys. <laughs> there's two units of 20s. One's got Shooters, one's got Slugger Choppers. And then there's a unit of 12 with Slugger and Chopper as well. So there's lots and lots of boys coming down on the table. Um... And yeah, that's about it really. So uh, set up now. Yeah, let's get set let's, up. Let's see how uh, see what's deployed on the table to start with. So you join us after deployment. We have each deployed our thousand points. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's quickly see what we've got. I have deployed a big long line of two units of pox walkers. In the centre, anchoring those two lines is uh, Typhus and the Tally Man. Uh, we have the Mythic Blight Hauler up here. He extends an aura that means I'm in cover even when I'm not in cover, so that's pretty handy. Uh, I've got my unit of 10 Plague Marines here, my Demon Prince with wings hiding over there, and I think that is everything. What have you got, mate? I have got a Daka Jet in the corner here. Nice. I have got a Battle Wagon that has got Gazgul, the Pain Boy, and a unit of Mega Nobs in. Yep. And I've got a Battle Wagon, which has got the 20 Slugger Chopper Boys in. Nice, nice. So we are going to now roll off to see who deploys first. We're not using the new uh, deployment method in the new uh, missions from Chapter Approved, which is basically the old 6th and 7th edition and 5th edition deployment method. We've done the standard game plus one if you deploy first. So Nick has the plus one. He has rolled a one, though. Followed by your what? Oh. oh, that means it's a draw. <laughs> off we go again after you. It's a three, I can... Yeah, oh. baby! I think I'll go first. Nick, do you seize? <laughs> this is um, why the new deployment methods are a bit better, I think. Do I want to seize? Because I'm hiding quite a bit. Uh, no, I'm not going to seize. Okie dokie. The main reason I think seizing is because you get your, deploy your reinforcements in well, earlier. That's true, yeah. But no, I'll, I'll counter with my Okay. It's the end of Death Guard turn one. So basically, I just move forward. I mean, I'm not really an Alpha Strike army. I fired one ranged weapon this turn, which was my Mythic Blight Hauler. Took one wound off of the Battle Wagon over there. Uh, I have psychically buffed this unit down here. But my main reason for wanting to go first was because I get my reinforcements in earlier. And I think that'll give me some advantage on the table. And because I'm a close combat army as well as Nick is, I needed to move forward with stuff. Uh, we rolled to see where anything would happen. The tree stayed off, even though nobody's on it. Uh, and one bauble randomly appeared. The bauble has appeared there. If you control that bauble at the end of your own movement phase, you can it open was, it up and it see actually, what's it inside. It's kind of come in here, but with the dice rolling, it's scattered over to there. Yeah, so we're going to show you. It's now the start of Nick's turn. We're going to see what the baubles or what the Christmas table does on his turn. So, so Nick rolls 2d6. Seven. Seven, which is the bog standard result. Uncover three baubles. So we better find the super expensive bauble bag if I give that to Nick. Uh, look at these bad boys. They were pretty expensive. No expense spared for a game of 40k, as you can There's see. three baubles. Three baubles. So then Nick has to roll randomly to see where they appear. So, so we... they appear in... The table one, is in two, six sections. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. That's it, as if it's a dice going away from you. So, so first one is going to appear in number one. So just plonk it down in the middle. Yep, let's sort out where they're all going. Number one. 
Number four. Number four, near the old one, yep. And number one. So two down here, I'm quite pleased with that. So now we have to scatter them. So now we have to scatter them. Scatter the first one. Yep. Ooh, Ooh. that's going to be nearly off the table. It should be 12 inches in. So they start off in the centre of the squares so down 12 here. 12 inches in. 12, 12 inches, inches in. In. It's just the other side of this. Yep. And then it's going... That's all the way 12 inches. He's yep. just on the board. Well, remember, you can use that melted snow part of the board as well. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, it's so that's how you deploy a board, but we won't roll the rest on camera because I keep on no, wobbling I the camera off start, while trying to read stuff. So we'll it's come done. back at the end of Nick's turn. End of Orcs, turn one, and another very, very quick turn. Dakar Jet's flown inside front of this building, shot at the zombies, and took one zombie out. Um, Gazgul's battle wagon has backed up here to claim a boar ball there, which we will roll on camera shortly. Um, fired off over. Uh, the thing over there I hit but failed to wound. Yep. Um, and Spatwagon here fired into the Casmarines but uh, had five shots at them and failed to hit with any of them. That was my turn. <laughs> now. Hold the camera so you can roll Yeah, if board. I swap camera over to you. Thank you. As you've got the table and everything as well. As you'll notice, Nick has control of a ball down there. Gazgul backed away from the enemy to go and claim a Christmas ball ball. You heard that right, Technically, folks. Technically, he hasn't gone backwards. He just hasn't gone forward. He stayed in the same I don't know. Line. That battle wagon model moved backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick has to roll a D6 and we so, consult a famous I'll table. D6 over here. It's a five. It's a five. Five on the table says, gain of victory point. The first oh, victory yeah. point of the day. He has claimed a ball ball and it is worth VPs. Okay, so now we'll move on to my turn. Uh, you join us at the end of Death Guard turn two. Didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped. So what happened? Firstly, we rolled on the Christmas table and the Christmas spirit joined us. You can see her down there. She's a very fragile glass ornament. So I'm sure my wife will be really pleased that I'm playing with it on the 40k table. Uh, so she arrived over there. The way she works is she has no way of hurting anybody or doing anything. Uh, she just arrives and is the Christmas spirit there. Us <laughs> being evil gits. I'm going to try and kill her while she's there. If the Christmas spirit result is rolled again while she's still on the table, she will teleport to a different part of the table. Uh, if uh, we manage to kill her, we get two victory points. But if we roll the result again, another version of her will come up because she's the Christmas spirit. So you think a little glass miniature, she's pretty easy to kill. Uh, she's got toughness eight. You have minus one on all to hit rolls against her. You halve all damage against her and she has a three plus invulnerable save. I managed to deal three wounds to her at range and then surrounded her in close combat and did nothing to her, which was a bit of a problem. I thought those two victory points were mine. Uh, but at the end of the turn, I'll just skip ahead to there. I did claim the bauble that was here, which was worth one victory point. So I've got one and Nick has one. Uh, I decided my reinforcement for this turn was Mortarion. Just him. He's nearly 500 points. The rest of my line just pushed forwards again. I cast some more Psychic Powers. I made these guys have higher strength and toughness by Typhus. I did a couple of smites. Uh, one from Typhus, uh, one from the Demon Prince over here. And we managed to knock four wounds off of the Dacker Jet. Uh, Mortarion here, he gave himself the minus one to hit. But unfortunately, while doing so, he dealt himself three mortal wounds. Uh, he saved one of them, though. He saved one. Time. I was not pleased with this result. Uh, he also he gave Blades of Putrefaction to the um, Poxwalkers in front of him, meaning they hit harder in close combat. The Demon Prince leapt forwards and slammed into the Dacker Jet, uh, thinking this will be an easy kill. It only had eight wounds left. I hit with all of my Demonic Axe. It does three flat damage. I then failed to wound with all of them. I re-rolled one and got the wounds through just because I wanted to get it below half profile because it literally halves the firepower of the thing if we deal it enough wounds. So it is now below half profile, which is good, uh, but really wasn't as good as a turn as I had hoped. So we are over to Nick. Let's see how he gets on while I go and cook some bacon. End of Orcs, turn two. Um, could have been a better turn. <laughs> It could have, you have one yeah. major fail, didn't you? One major fail, but I brought on, as my reinforcements in my movement phase, I brought on my 20 shooter boys. They fired into the uh, Demon Prince and did nothing to it. Um, and I brought on looters and the big mech with shock attack gun here, which dealt some wounds to this guy over here. The, He's a hardy the little fella, the bright mm. crawler. Uh, unfortunately, me big mech rolled an 11 for the strength, which meant every hit I do does D3 mortal wounds. And then when I rolled um, a d6 for trying to hit, I didn't do particularly well. And nope. <laughs> I got one hit through and did like 
mortal wounds to it, but then didn't wound it with the actual hit, which could have done another no. D6 damage. So, uh, also shot the cannons from the two battle wagons at it, uh, and they missed. Uh, this battle wagon, we'll go with a fail to start off with. Ooh! It finished there at the end of my turn, so I get a ball ball. Oh, <laughs> okay. That, let's quickly roll the ball ball. So let's roll the ball ball, ball down here. We get a one. one. Oh dear, there's one for coal inside. You get nothing. Damn it. Made my turn even worse. Yep, excellent. <laughs> this, um, I decided not to get Gazgul out of this, because I we was checking rules and things. So what I decided, to give him a bit of protection for a turn, I brought the bat, the bat wagon up here, and I was going to charge my death roller into these Plague of Zombies, because... The Death Roller with the new Orcs Codex. The Battle Wagon has six attacks. If I charge in with the Death Roller, it gets an additional DC, D6 attacks. So it could be a possible 12 attacks. It hits on a two plus. Hits on a two. Yeah. It's strength nine, minus two save, does two damage a hit. Back to the old days of Fish yeah. Edition so, where the Death Roller was death to so the Death. So I was hoping to go in and just roll over some zombies. Um, and then set Gazgul for a turn before getting out. But instead... I rolled a double one for my charge and it stayed there. Um, the Daka Jet come flying over here. It shot at the zombies and I took out six zombies with the Daka Jet, which was good. Um, this battle wagon's moved over into the woods there. It's got the boys out here because dun dun dun, the Christmas bear has arrived. Um, do you want to go through the rules? So the Christmas bear, he's a hunted monster, similar to our hunted monster rules you may have seen on other channels. Basically. On his turn, he wanders around and he goes and attacks the things that are closest to him and he goes towards stuff that has hurt him. But Nick has engaged him in combat. We haven't actually attacked back with him yet. I'll do that in a minute. Uh, so he has a toughness of seven. He's got a full profile. Um, he's got a degrading strength, degrading uh, weapon skill and a degrading movement. Um, he's got 12 wounds, toughness seven. He's only got a four up to save um, and he has a five plus feel no pain. But the most important of his rules is you get minus one to wound him because of his winter coat. It's mm -hmm. hard to wound him through that. And um, I so think that winter dangerous. coat is his scarf that he's got around him. Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> so we'll do some wounds back in a minute and then maybe a yep. morale check. Um, I think it will be affected by it. My Orc boys, because there's 20 boys in the unit, they've got four attacks each. But I put like 50 hits into him with just the boys and the power claw. I've got him down to seven wounds left. Yep. Um, the other thing that happened with the bear coming in, though, is... You see that little glow there? The Christmas tree is on. And if it stays on in Curly's turn, then that zombie is within range to score another victory point for that. That is. But obviously, we get to roll the dice first to see if it stays on. Um, right, we'll see what the bear does and then come back with the Plague Marines turn three. Okay, we're on to Death Guard turn three. I chose to bring on the remains of my Death Guard force, leaving behind my Alpha Legion allies. I rolled on the back of the table my Rhino, it sprinted forward, popped smoke, and claimed this objective, which was the only good point of my turn. I got two victory points from that objective that was there. Uh, what did I roll on the table this turn, Nick? Uh, bauble. A bauble. bauble oh, had. it was that bauble. So we've still got one bauble over here. Oh, yeah, and I turned off the Christmas tree, even though I was in control of it, which was a bit <laughs> annoying, so no VP for me there. Other things that came on in this wave of reinforcements, my Putrid Blight drone came on. Came on from the side, using my one unit I can outflank with on this deployment part. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not allowed to be set up anywhere within nine inches of an enemy, so it couldn't flame out any of Nick's boys, but I'm in position. Uh, other things that came on this time, trying to think what it was. The Rhino has the two squads inside it. Ah, yes. Um, I deep terminate. struck in my Terminators here, my Death Shroud <laughs> Terminators. They have come down to guard Mortarion because he is easy to wound and such, so he needs to be guarded. Uh, so they can take wounds on a 2 plus for him. Any hits that go against him get directed to him, or, uh, directed to them on a 2 plus, and they're Terminators, so they're pretty good. Really helps with his small arm fire. Uh, like pistols and stuff and normal bolt guns. And power claws. Yeah, so <laughs> we our plan for this turn was the battle wagon was here. You can tell I've destroyed it, but not as easily as you'd think. Uh, so the battle wagon was there. Gazgul was inside it. I wanted to be able to attack Gazgul. So I went, let's kill the battle wagon first. So I moved Typhus up back there. I moved Mortari on here. And I moved the Demon Prince there. All of them had the battle wagon as the closest target. They all smited. I got a grand total of two mortal wounds through with my three smites. I used command points on those just to get those two. So that didn't help. So then I fired my mythic blight hauler. Did nothing to the battle wagon. And then I gave up doing that. So we just charged it and cut it in half with Mortarion in combat. So Gazgul was going to get to choose his targets now. Other than Mortarion doing it. Which isn't clever. 
So it went from bad to worse over this side of the table. We're still surrounding this angel. And we did nothing to it in combat. <laughs> couldn't hit, couldn't wound, couldn't do shit. Really poor. At the back there, my demon prince charged into the looters, uh, weathered the overwatch, and started laying about on them. I hit them five times. I managed to wound once with my demon prince, and Nick made his death skull save, meaning I didn't yeah. kill any. He didn't hurt me back, but I was really expecting to cleave through but all boys it, with a demon made prince. made five saves, but they are yeah. two up saves that you made. Yeah, it, so. exactly. So that was really bad as well. So overall, a pretty poor turn. I'm going to show you what I've still got left to come on. So these guys are in their rhino still. And this contingent here is already to pour on next turn. Okay. Whereas I get to choose from this turn. Nick's this choice is this turn. Sorry about making you dizzy with a spinning camera. A load of fast stuff and the dreadnought. Or a load of fast stuff and some boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see which Nick chooses. End of Orcs turn three and not particularly a good turn for myself either. Um, this turn I brought on the bikers over in the corner because I didn't have a lot of space to bring my bits on. No, I so, really pushed into your deployment. Yeah, so the bikes have come on the corner here. The Death Dread came on the side here and charged into the drone. And the drone is on to three wounds left at the moment because yeah. I fired it lots with the bikers and the Death Dread. Um, down here, the boys, they shot into the Pox Walkers. Um, I looters, I lost some in combat. And other than that, I didn't do any wounds back. The big mech, he failed miserably trying to shoot Terminators. Oh, didn't he just? I, I charged... Strength two. Yeah, because you roll 2d6 with a strength, I rolled double ones at strength two. And then I failed, I four hits, failed to admit, I missed everything. Um, Gazi uh, charged into Mortarion, the Mega Knobs charged into the Terminators and Pox Walkers, and the Pain Boy is back here. That dice there, he's saying Gazi is down on one wound at the end of that com at the end of the combat, because Gazi hit... Mortarium, but obviously did most of the damage went onto the Terminators and killed yeah. one Terminator. I was rolling hot there. Yeah, for, for obviously... And you weren't rolling hot for Gazi because you had minuses to hit Mortarium. Yeah. My, um, and then uh, putrefaction smell. Ter um, my asthma smell. Yeah. More, uh, Terminator's attack back, was in it? Terminator, or? I then interrupted with the Terminator's killed all your Mega Knobs with yeah. my Death Shroud. So, Mort so Mortarion did all the, all the attacks against Gazi and that's a lot of... It's the first time I've gone against Mortarion yeah. and... I was thinking, oh, you know, like Gulliman. I mean, it's not, it's, it's damaging, hits, but a few big hits, but eighteen smaller hits because of your invulnerable. Yeah, and it was eight wounds through. I actually only because of the six up invante from the pain boy survived that. Yeah. So because I made it was eight Stuck wounds. And I was, but then you attacked again. I attacked again and then killed another Terminator <laughs> <laughs> from the, from the bodyguard thing. I got three three more attacks in and Mortarion got more off into the You hit three out of seven attacks when he's yeah on a on a four plus. Three plus. Four plus. No, it was, it was a three, three plus. Might have hit one you're more old. time, but no, no, you're you're two ones, two twos. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so it, I killed another Terminator there. Um, over here, my war trike came in and charged into the bear. He did two wounds on the bear, and the boys did nothing. So the bear is still there on five wounds. Um, only took out one more boy though. We returned the bear. Yeah, he wounded your trike, didn't he? But... Yeah. Uh, did a wound on the trike, so the trike's down to seven wounds. That cannon tried shooting in as well, did nothing. The dragster, I bought it in the back corner here because I advanced it as well. Because if you roll a four plus on the advance roll, it basically teleports nine inches away from an enemy model. So I kind of wanted to Be back te here. teleport it in at the back here so I could get its shots off on something around the back there. But unfortunately, I advanced one inch, so he got stuck over there, basically. He shot off at the angel and did nothing to the angel, though. Um, and the Daka jet. What did the Daka jet fire? Daka jet killed, killed some pox walkers. Killed a couple of pox walkers. That was it. Um, and that was it. As I say, it's we bad. both had shocking turns there. Yeah, mine. I say, unfortunately, with you go, the pain boy's dead. Pain boy doesn't heal Gazzy until my turn. Yeah. So I believe Gazzy's Gazzy gonna, gonna is die. Not gonna be alive. I'm gonna smite him to death. To be honest. He's yeah, it's so die. so easy to smite him, and you probably charge into the pain boy with something yeah. and take out the pain boy. So. Uh, it's not looking good, as I'm still only on one VP, because there's no more board well, I'm only on two, so... No, you're on, you should be on three, because you're getting two VPs. You had one. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So. Ho, ho, ho. I think I need to be getting killed in the Spirit of Christmas and yeah. the Polar Bear. Yeah, that was the thing that Nick rolled on his turn, the Spirit moved, moved. over to there. Yeah, moved those here and... Which I was quite glad of, because it freed up my ten labourings, because <laughs> they're doing diddly. Oh, well, let's move on to turn four and see how it goes. Okay, Death Guard turn four. And praise be to the mighty Nurgle. Gazgul is no more.
Smited. Yep, uh, Mortaran just smited him casually in the psychic phase, uh, killing him. Uh, but he went down, throwing his death throws out at me, spending two command points and attacking as he died. Luckily, one of my bodyguards was still close by and absorbed four of the attacks onto himself, killing him utterly. Uh, but um, one had got through to Mortaran, who just laughed it off with his... Uh, Barber and plate Four armor. Really. Yep. So rest of the stuff that happened, my bloke drone floated out of combat with the dreadnought and has gone over here and flamed some boys. Wasn't brilliant at it. Uh, the pox walkers and the tally man are walking over to back him up. Uh, these guys down here, they got out of their rhino, moved sideways, grabbed the uh, little uh, bauble objective there at the end of the end of the turn. Gave me no victory points, unfortunately. They unloaded their plasma guns into the back of this on overcharge and have knocked five wounds off it, so that's reasonable. Or knocked it down to five wounds, which yeah. is reasonable. Uh, then what else happened? Uh, this rhino has sprinted forwards a bit. Uh, still got one more squad of plasma guys inside. Uh, my Elf Legion allies have arrived. Here is the uh, Chaos Lord on bike. He has moved to the centre, moved straight up. Uh, back here... We have a squad with an auto cannon. They shot up at the flyer, did nothing. Uh, I decided to try and grab the victory points of the angel. So <laughs> I put down my Pell Brute here, fired over, failed to hurt the angel. My mythic blight hauler here, failed to hurt the angel. I gave up at that point. Uh, the demon prince has killed the looters. Um, Typhus is slowly shuffling forwards. He is a bit slow, unfortunately. Over here, the Alpha Legion Berserkers came off the side of the table and attempted to charge on this. Even with their re-roll from their banner, they failed to get there. And I suspect it's going to attempt to teleport jump away next turn. They're really out of position, unfortunately. But there was nowhere along the back line of Nick's table to deploy them, even though I was allowed to do so. You still would have arrived without being within nine inches of the enemy. Both of these squads have moved forward, both the Poxwalkers and the Nurgle Marines. Uh, they have left the tree behind because they couldn't care less because it's never on on my turn. Uh, the Poxwalkers moved back here and claimed another bauble that was in this crater. Um, it turned out to heal them. It was a Christmas present inside. Gave them one Poxwalker back. And that was the story uh, of my yeah, turn. Yeah, the lump of coal and the bauble here that these guys had. Oh, yeah, that one there. Yeah, that was a lump yeah. of coal. So not the best turn victory points wise, but we did kill Gasgall. Uh, let's see what Nick does with his last set of reinforcements. So end of Orcs turn four and everything is now on the board. So... We dropped some Storm Boys in the back here. We attempted to charge the Rhino, but failed the charge. Uh, did a wound to it, though, by shooting it with our pistols. Um, the Dacker Jets flying over here along the lines. Shot at the Chaos Lord on the bike, who's... If I get it, he's down there. Down on one wound, and, the Chaos Lord. Yep, the Death Cop just shot at him, and basically he was down to one wound on there, and the Death Cop just went flying in in uh, combat. And failed to unfortunately take the last yeah, wound off of him. Yeah, point to keep him alive after some yeah. good save rolling. And he, um, yeah, there was he made all but one save to the command point to basically make it make his save. Um, and he took one out in return. The Death Dreads finished off the um, uh, drone over here. Took another took another wound though from Overwatch. The boys did charge in as well just in case because there's an extra power core there. Bikes come around here. Some more Mega Knobs come on the board. Uh, they all shot at the Demon Prince and did nothing. The two-up save on that is just ridiculous. Uh, and the Meganobs failed to charge into him. I fired a lot of stuff at this angel. The Big Mech fired, <laughs> that, uh, the Dragster fired, the Riveter thing fired, a cannon on this fired. And, of course, like anything, you cannot kill the spirit of Christmas. You cannot do it. That so was the design. I charged into combat and still failed to do, do anything. But combat over here... I finally finished off the bear. Though the bear did three wounds to my trikes, and uh, the war trikes down to four wounds left. Yep. The um, bear becomes an objective now it's dead, and every time we roll its result on the table, the points the objective is worth at the end of the game go up by one. Mm -hmm. So it's holding that at the end of the game is the important bit now. And I also managed to collect two boar balls. The, obviously, the um, truck here collected one, gave me one victory point. And the truck here, which has got some boys in as well, Collected one and gave me two victory points. So I've taken the lead. Yeah, it's four points three. three. But there's still three turns to go. Yep. So let's see what um, what ball balls come down next. Or if the Christmas lights turn on. Woo! <laughs> I'm not near them anymore, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It will turn on then. <laughs> End of turn five for the Death Guard and a pretty good one. Uh, I lost my uh, Chaos Lord on bike to the Death Copters. I couldn't spare the points to save him. Uh, these Nurgle guys down, these um, Death Guard down here, 
blew away at the Storm Boys with help from the Storm Bolter on the back of their Rhino. Uh, they dealt enough wounds that they failed morale and ran off. Uh, these guys over here, along with the Laz Cannons over there, uh, peppered into the close combat. We have rules for firing into close combat you're not involved in. There's basically a chance you miss completely and then you randomise who you hit. Uh, they fired over here hoping to kill the Angel. I did one damage to the bloody Angel. It's worth two VPs, which is a massive swing at this point. Um, did one damage to it and I managed to kill the uh, big mech, which was really good because it was objective secured, being Death Skulls. Uh, Mortarion moved over here. Uh, with help from the mythic Blight Hauler, um, had destroyed the truck with the boys in he then walked in and murdered all the boys in close combat and he claimed the bauble that was lying on the floor and it had coal in it so it was worth no victory points which was a bit of a pain the invulnerable demon prince walked over here slaughtered two of the mega knobs and the remaining one dealt him two wounds back which wasn't very nice of him uh, over here typhus smited and did a massive smite and blew away the death dread uh, over here I moved in because this uh, dead polar bear is worth one victory point at the end of the game at the moment. So I moved in there with my death guard and slaughtered the boys. It, they dealt some wounds back to me, uh, but my flails of um, corruption uh, managed to deal quite a lot of damage because they're really good at scything through chaff. Um, so we're looking good on that objective there. I moved my, um, what are they called, berserkers around here. But vehicles are not their forte. Even with attacking twice, I've failed to kill either vehicle. I've barely scratched the battle wagon. Oh, the thing down here is nearly dead, but not quite. And that is about what happened. Let's see how Nick responds. He's still got a fair bit of stuff over here. Uh, end of Orcs turn five. Uh, just a quick note, we're going to shorten the game. We're only going to have one more turn each. It's going to be end at the end of the next turn after us. Um, so this turn... Uh, obviously, I had nothing over here. My dice roll was the polar bear. So the polar bear is worth now two victory points at the end yeah. of the thing. Um, with the demon prince down here, my biker's going to get through. So we've come around here. Uh, the boys and the bikers shot all the pox walkers off. And we charged into Typhus and Tallyman. We took out Tallyman. And Typhus is obviously still standing there and we're in combat with him. He killed two bikes. Um, yes, two bikes are dead. Um, I did two more wounds to the demon prince before he killed my... Um, Obviously, Mega Nob, so the Demon Prince is down to four. The Dacker Jet's flown over here, and we tried taking out more Pox Walkers. The Death Cops come over here, took another wound off of this um, crawly thing here, and got into combat with that. Um, I finished off the Angel, hmm. so two more victory points for me there. Yeah. And obviously, these guys, I finally lost the Booster Blaster in combat. It took the second round of combat again from these, but and the Battle Wagon's on six wounds left, so. Yep. It's still holding in there. So scores at the moment is six to me, three to you, isn't it? Yeah. I need a big so, bonus here. Obviously, that's worth two victory points at the end. I'm so. looking good for that. So it's kind of six, five, I think, because I've got loads of objective yeah. secured around It's there. now looking at what, what baubles come in, really. Yeah, basically, it's going to come down to the baubles. That's all Christmas games should. Exactly. Uh, and the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree is actually oh, on as Christmas well. the Christmas tree is on. But, but I it's can't at the start. Score it anymore. No, so it's only gonna... you can score that, and you can't score. It I can't score anymore. anymore. So, so it's pointless. So it's down to basically what ball ball's coming in your turn, because obviously, yeah. if you get a victory point from a ball ball, if I don't get a victory point from anything, then I need to hope you roll for the bear game. Yes. Victory points. So, well, Ooh. let's see how it goes. It's a close game. You join us at the end of Death Guard turn six, and it is my last turn of the game. So it was quite an important one. We rolled on the chart at the start of the turn, and we got three ball balls. Uh, they came in zones. Four, uh, zones three, zones five, and zone six, which I was pretty pleased with because I had control of all of those zones. We rolled this one and it just appeared next to my dudes. Unfortunately, at the end of the turn, I opened this and it had a command point inside. Useful normally, not helpful in my situation here. Over here, this one arrived in the center and scattered 12 inches that way. <laughs> my dreadnought, even with running, was not going to get there. Over there, I had all of these guys. I would happily have backed out from combat. It's it went 12 inches that way. <laughs> when you withdraw from combat, which I would happily have done, you can't advance, so I could not get to it. Right pain. So I stayed in combat there. I beat up the battle wagon. It's now on one wound. Still didn't kill it. I completely surrounded the polar bear, uh, so I've definitely got that objective, which is worth two now. Uh, Mortarion moved over, killed the Death Killer War Trike, and killed the Boom Dacker Snares Wagon. Yeah. 
Uh, this guy down here backed out of combat with the copters, and then we fired loads of stuff at the copters, killed that, and yeah, fired loads of stuff and killed get, the plane. Just easy. a white nick out. Over here, the Demon Prince moved in, and together with Typhus, they murdered all the bikes. Nick only has left the Battle Wagon on one and this squad of boys, who on his turn will just back out of combat so they don't die. Nick is winning 6-3. to three. Uh, si uh, Yeah, 6-3. 6-3. The Polar Bear is worth two victory points at the end. I control it. He can't stop me. So now Nick just has to roll his dice, and as long as he doesn't make the Polar Bear be worth one more victory point, he wins the game. So he needs to not roll a 10 or 11 or a 12. There's no command point re-rolls, no nothing. It's a seven. Nick makes some more baubles. We might get more VPs, but we're going to call the game there. Oh, oh congratulations, congratulations, mate. <laughs> Excellent Christmas uh, fun, as always. Six five, a very hard Six five, victory. yeah. Considering <laughs> Mortarion just butchered Gasgol. Oh, he did. Mortarion was awesome. He is going to get some paint on him this Christmas. I don't know how much paint, but some paint on him. <laughs> Oh, that was a pretty epic game, wasn't it? Yeah, I was very touch and go throughout the whole sort of thing. Yeah. We, we got four balls, but then we didn't get many more balls in the middle at all, yeah. did we? Nothing really appeared. It was the polar bear, the angel come in, and the angel moved. It was, and... as we said, that killing of the angel, killing of the Christmas spirit, which yeah. Nick did. Are you proud of yourself, my friend? I am very proud of myself. <laughs> I'm going to go home and tell my kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we've got to pack up now. Uh, so, thank you very much for watching and Merry, Merry Christmas and to Happy everybody. New Year, so sure Happy New Year. Then, yeah, you'll see us in the New Year. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Bye. Bye. The